miscellaneous mm. topics as per our usual format for the day at Morning Barakah. Um, we are joined by Sayyid Masin Shah. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum salam wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. We should call you Smiley Shaykh. <laughs> Smiley Shaykh. <laughs> or Shaykh Smiley. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I thought the green scarf would give it away. But, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, say we, we've, we've covered some, some random topics, but these random topics mm. are quite important in this day and age yeah. because a lot of these topics are underrated, um, which have a massive effect on, uh, on our lives from an Islamic perspective, from a regulation perspective, and how we integrate within society. Yeah. Um, one such topic, um, Zara and Sayyid, is that we wanted to discuss today is actually food etiquette. Mm -hmm. um, and just a bit of a, a background behind why we're discussing this is because obviously from, from, a, from an Eastern perspective, back, in our, back home, we, the, the etiquette of food is because we respect food and we respect what it gives us and where it came from. Um, whereas within this day and age in, in Western it's society... gratitude as well, isn't it? It's gratitude. Yeah, because yeah. Allah's blessing. Exactly. But in this day and age, within the Western society, food is just food and they yeah. just eat it without... without Pleasurable. A, yeah, without... Exactly. It's more of an indulgence mm. kind of thing without actually thinking about is there an etiquette um, to, to food? Yeah. Um, food and beverages, so... And there's so much waste. We see that, of course. you know, supermarkets throwing away tons and tons of food. Mm. Homeless people hungry, so... Yeah, it's a, it's a massive issue that we have. Um, again, we're saying where we're living, not to say that any part of the world is, is immune to these kind of okay. issues. Yeah, of um, but the etiquette, I think definitely, I think one of the things that really is, is a stark <coughs> difference is when you go back to, you know, for, for instance, visiting family, etiquettes of when you're going on Ziara, mm -hmm. you know, how people are hospitable. Um, and it's quite a stark, I find it's a stark difference. Um, so people, for instance, whether it's Arabayin and that's, you know, once in a year or you're, like I said, you visit family, it's the giving, isn't it? It's the nature of being mm. generous and, mm. and the mannerisms. And I think possibly we don't, because we don't embed them in our cultural yeah. aspect here. So I'm hoping that you can shed some yeah. background. Even, even what, what, what Zara was saying, and even that extending to actually the actual act of eating. Um, mm. I'm sure there are some, some rulings. And we're not entering into haram and halal here. We're, no. we're, it's more about the etiquette, so it's about the Indeed. manners, what's Indeed. makruh, what's mustahab, for example. Um, so if you can share some insight into that, would be great. Inshallah, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Um, I mean, Ayatollah Sayyid Sadiq Shah Zahafadullah does discuss this matter in his uh, Rasala Amaliyah, which is really nice. Mm. Gives a little indication on the etiquettes of eating and drinking. Um, I mean, this goes without saying, but you know, we, we respect food and it's a risk from Allah subhanahu mm. wa ta'ala. It's a blessing to us and uh, unfortunately we live in a day and age where some people don't get this blessing. Yeah. Um, so we really need to respect food. Um, and not just that, but you know, there's food at the mosque, uh, there's food when we're going to Arba'in, and also uh, we get invited a lot as well. Yeah. There's a very, very uh, social culture around food, especially from the Middle East and where we come from. Um, you know, people socialize over food and then invite others. Um, when you go visit family long distance, you're definitely going to get fed. <laughs> and even when it comes to like even looking for a suitor for marriage and stuff, there's a lot of food involved. So there are etiquettes to, to eating and drinking, which inshallah I'll discuss. Um, it's a very, it's a very warm, beautiful culture, isn't it? Yeah. And I think it's something that mm. I hope we know, we don't lose, yeah. um, despite yeah. wherever in the world we may go to. But you're absolutely right. It's a, it's sure. a, it's a centralized aspect of how we interact with one another, indeed, isn't it? Indeed. So um, let's say you're you're invited, you know, to to eat at, at someone's house. Um, it is uh, mustahab to actually. Um, Attend, <laughs> but really, uh, it's supposed to have to um, wash your hands before you eat. Mm -hmm. So to wash your hands before and also after you eat, this is mustahab. Uh, an important one is do not begin eating until the host begins really? to eat. Yes, this is mustahab as well. Uh, so you wait for the host to begin eating, mm -hmm. uh, then you sh you should eat. And furthermore, it is mustahab to stop eating before the host stops eating. So the host should be the first to begin to eat. And he should be the last to, to eat as well. So on the flip side, the host should then realize when people have finished mm -hmm. for him to actually finish as well. So it kind of I goes mean, both if, ways. Yeah, if, 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 if that would be very nice of the host, yeah. if, if it recognizes this must have act and that, you know, maybe eat slowly or yeah, exactly. keeps a little bit yeah. until everyone's finished and then finishes off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it would be very, really nice. Uh, but yes, it's, it's must have for, I mean, it's also for us not to overeat yeah. uh, in front of the host. To yeah. eat more than the host and maybe be, be too eager and keen to begin yeah. before the host as well. Um, other mustahab acts is also to eat with the right hand. Mm. 
So, I mean, growing up in my culture, in Pakistani culture, you're always told you have to eat with your right hand. You can't yeah. eat with your yeah. left. You know, it's very, very strong. But it's mustahab. Mm. Um, so to eat with your right hand. Um, also to say Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim before you eat. And to say Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim before you indulge in every cuisine. Mm. So let's say there's some rice. You say Bismillah before you pour the rice in. And then you're going to go for the mark, <laughs> the, the curry. curry yeah. Say Bismillah before you put that in. Take the salad, say Bismillah before you put the salad in. That's interesting. So just before every um, you know, uh, cuisine or mm. every dish, to say Bismillah. And also to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the end of your meal. It's a mustahab. Uh, yeah. What that. is the etiquette? Um, someone puts food in front of you that you just don't like, like raw steak. <laughs> <laughs> what would you do? What's the etiquette? Do you eat it quietly or, put it to the you know, I mean, like I said, honest. the cultural aspect is in this part of the world, you know, you probably speak your mind and say, well, actually, I'm sorry, I can't eat this. But yeah. what would you do from an Islamic perspective, the etiquette? So from an Islamic perspective? Not to hurt your host's feeling. So Salih doesn't discuss that. <laughs> <laughs> so what would you I mean, say yeah. as an etiquette? But know, as an etiquette, I mean, this, this is my personal opinion, uh, so it doesn't link back to any marja whatsoever. Mm. I think everyone's entitled to eat or not to eat what they uh, pleasure, yeah. uh, what they like to. Uh, however, it is also rude to incline an invitation. So maybe just take a little bit and bite the bullet, as they say, uh, you know, just, just have a little bit to say that you did try, you did like it. Yeah. And if you didn't like it, it's OK. I'm sure there are other things on the mm. table which you will enjoy. Yeah. And maybe you could uh, compensate for that by taking a little bit extra. Again, it's probably boiling down to culture rather than, mm. than, than Islam. But it's like, for example, people who over, they, they, they give you too much. Mm. And it's like, well, I actually cannot eat this and I'm going to be sick if I do, that, so just please stop doing that, that, it. That, that's that, just all culture stuff. I, I think that's, that's a big problem. I think people need to actually, we need to change this culture. We need to change people, this culture. People need to understand that, you know, I, I, can't, I can't actually facilitate <laughs> <laughs> this much. There's a yeah. limit. But it's a giving, isn't it? Because the person, your host is ensuring the yeah. guest is not hungry. Yeah. And so they're overfilling. And I think the generations above us were always like, no more, because that was their love and their yeah, yeah. kindness. Indeed, but but everyone has a different affinity, yeah. uh, yeah. you know, and also so there's like you know dietary requirements and yeah for example if someone has you know, got another dinner to go to later on or tea mm. or a meeting or Lucky. some of us like to go to the gym we, we can't you know have a, a good meal before we go to the gym because mm. we'll be able to move yeah. <laughs> yeah. so tell us about sort of the post eating uh, etiquettes as well because I know there's, there's there's a couple of things that you can do post eating or um, before and after you eat to take a bit of salt now I really want to emphasize on this that Please do not use table salt or what we know as uh, sodium chloride formally because this mm. is like synthetic, uh, you know, chemically made salt. Okay. It doesn't contain the same nutrients and minerals as natural salt. Okay. So sea salt, Himalayan right. salt, this would be much more beneficial and more healthy for you to, to have before and after your meal. Uh, rather than using table salt or you know the, the cheap it's stuff. Healthy for cooking with. You Indeed, know, it's, it's, yeah. it's not good. And also, uh, there's a there's a practice. Uh, I think the Iranians do it a lot. Is they they lay down yeah. and they put their right foot on top of their left foot. Yeah. Uh, this also is it's mustahab to do this, and it helps with digestion. Um, and also to eat fruit. It's mustahab to wash fruit and to, and to eat fruit. Is there a particular? I mean, health wise, I heard that um, possibly from an. Um, a hadith, I'm not sure the timing of eating fruit. There's um, that if you eat it in the morning, morning. it has more benefit, and, and if you that, eat it, it's that, like eating like, nothing, it's yeah, got yeah. no nutrients in the afternoon. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Uh, you should eat fruit in the morning. Really? Uh, yeah, yeah, we have a rewire in regards to this. Eat fruit, in the eat fruit in the morning on an empty stomach. Um, I believe eating, I'm not sure which of the Aima said it, but eating an apple on an empty stomach is like uh, putting roses into your stomach. Really? Yeah. Eating an apple in the morning on an empty amazing. stomach, it's like roses for the, mm. for the, for the stomach. Um, and like they say in English, uh, an apple a day keeps the doctor away. Yeah. So yeah, there is a very, very... Uh, mm. So what, why, why would it be, it's the same apple, why would it be not beneficial for you at 8 o'clock in the afternoon? I think it's more to do with the body clock rather than the fruit itself. Mm. Yeah. Maybe it's because it's funny that because all of our invitations to, to family gatherings is in the evening and mostly yeah. fruit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. It is. <laughs> I, guess, I guess that's a healthy alternative to like having Dessert. <laughs> chocolate, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, you know, mm. th th you know, things like that. But um, mm. yeah, fr fruit. There's a big, big um, emphasis on fruit. Even we talk about fruits from heaven. Mm. Uh, I'll give you an example: pomegranates, pomegranates. figs, mm -hmm. um, the apple of Eden. 
<laughs> so there's, there's there's many many uh, you know um, emphasis mm. and, and and relation to spirituality and fruit mm. Mm, indeed. And not forgetting, there's also uh, mustahab acts in regards to water and drinking. Yeah. Um, it's mustahab to stand and drink during the daytime, and to sit and drink during the nighttime. Uh, it is mustahab to sip your water, not to gulp it. Um, also to take minimum three pauses, you could say, or to drink your water in three stages rather than downing it all at once. Okay. Is there anything about having it with meals or after meals? Or you, it is makruh to have it after a yeah. fatty, greasy meal. Really? Yeah, according to Sayyid Sadiq. Because it solidifies, doesn't it? The water will solidify the I guess, fat. Or yeah, something? I guess it's to do with, with uh, yeah, the reactions. Oh. And the other thing is... Because the fat, sorry, just... Because yeah. the fat, I, I noticed in, in meals, that when the kebab or whatever mm. it is, you put it down, it's greasy. Mm. Yeah. Um, within five, ten minutes, it's just gone all fatty. Yeah. Mm. Um, and so water... We'll, we'll do um, that, yeah. We'll do that to it. We'll probably cool it down and, yeah, mm. solidify it. So it's makru mm. to have water after a fatty meal. Interesting. And um, it is mustahab to say bismillah before you drink water. And it is a great, great mustahab act and honor to remember Abba Abdullah al Hussein and his thirst when drinking water. Mm. We were having this conversation actually the other night about um, drinking water um, with meals. Yeah. And um, obviously, something. some people have, yeah, and some people have like indigestion problems and they need to drink while they're eating. But I think there's these. Um, an Eastern culture that has water only 45 minutes or so after the meal mm -hmm. because it, it's to prevent the solidification of the water mm. um, and then generally break down all the food and it helps in weight loss and things like that. I don't know. It's, we would just have a discussion. So what, what would be a good alternative? Uh, you might be right actually with the the warm yeah. drink. You, you should, warm. yeah. Mm. You, well, I'm, I'm talking about during the meal. You need to wash it down something. Like, you uh, do, obviously. I don't want to do throat, carbonate. Your throat gets dry. Yeah, you, your throat gets dry and stuff. So, um, Maybe a sip, I guess. Won't, won't. It's, it's, I, know, it, yeah. I know it's recommended to drink water before your meal. Mm. Mm. To, to drink because, um, obviously, of, of the health benefits. Um, also, because it stops you from eating too much, which is a yeah. big mockroo act. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. to eat excessively. Yeah. So for, by drinking water at the beginning of your meal, you kind of take up a bit of the space and it will force you to eat less. So it's, it's recommended to drink water before. I like you, some, some of these etiquettes, you can understand the wisdom behind it. Yeah. And some of them is like, well, you know, I'm still yet to find what it actually means or why. So with things like, for example, eating excessively, you can understand why that's, yeah. that's, that's bad for you, even from like a weight gain perspective, or for example, what you're eating could be bad for you because mm. it, it just has negative effects on the, on the, on the, on the body. So we be very interested to know like the wisdom. Because a lot, a lot of these things, because it's not haram or halal, people will avoid yeah, it yeah. because it's, I have to either do the haram, oh, or yes. avoid yeah. the haram and do the halal. But these little sort of small things like the mustahab and the makruh, I'd love to find out a bit more about which direction they'll mm -hmm. take us if Definitely. we do follow that. I mean, if you look at, now this is coming from like a philosophical angle, mm. in regards to eating a lot, um, they say that if you eat a lot, it makes you heavy. I'm mm. not talking about heavy as in weight, uh, but heavy as in your soul can't rise. Mm. You know, and for your soul to elevate towards the heavens. Well. Yeah. You know, there's a big emphasis on, even, even in the Imma, we're like, don't eat too much. Well, you're yeah. meant to leave even a portion, aren't you, of your stomach? So I don't uh, know if any yeah, of you yeah, have oxygen. tried, if you eat slowly and stop, pause for like 10 minutes, you'll actually feel like, I didn't realise how full I was. Yeah. But if you continue... Because yeah, it takes about 10 minutes for, yeah. the, for, yeah. for the brain takes, to yeah. realise that yeah. it's mm -hmm. actually full. Um, yeah. And by that time it's too late. Indeed. Yeah, Indeed. You've over and, and also exactly. one thing to like notice is during Ramadan, we eat less, but how much more spiritual are we? You know, there is a correlation yeah. to you know, yeah. how much you're taking in Definitely. And, and, and your spirituality. And then you look at someone like... Imam Ali, alayhi salam, how much did he eat? Mm. You know, they said about half a bread. And Coarse yogurt. bread, yeah. You know, he ate very, very little. But it does have an impact. I think um, overindulgence in any desire, it doesn't matter if it's your food, um, you know, if it's any material aspect in this world, whatever it is will impact your soul. So if you're not, if you're overeating with food and that's your, you know, um, you know your happiness. I mean, I, I love looking at food. I think it's you know it's mm -hmm. a creation. It's beautiful. It's artistic. Mm -hmm. But it, I can't eat a lot. Um, but it's it, the effect on your soul. You feel it, like you said. You the grogginess comes in. Um, and yes, you do feel a lightness. Um, and I think again, when you're getting up to pray, say you at Ramadan, you know people eat. Some people hasten and eat. Oh, yeah. But actually, if you pray before, then eat. You don't feel yeah. you know that prayer is actually yeah. feels a lot more connected then yeah, when you've eaten like oh you know so yeah, yeah, yeah. it definitely has an impact and I think it's just keeping it in moderation isn't it that um, not to over 
overdo things either way. Definitely. And furthermore, in, in regards to makuru accent, in regards to eating, mm. um, it is makuru to actually clean the bone of meat. Okay. So if there's meat on the bone, right. and to actually clean it all off, take it all off, you know, it's, it's, it's makuru, it's, it's bad akhlaq. You should keep a bit of meat on it. Mm. Uh, and I think so also okay. when you look at it from a host perspective, that they want to be giving, um, so we're going back to the original conversation, that they want to be giving generously. But when you are a guest at someone's house, you don't want to be looking like, you know, you, you've never eaten and here, oh, thank God you fed me. And I'm yeah. going to take every show. No, it looks very cheap, doesn't indeed, it? So it's indeed. about and I think, I think the ability there's, there's, about yourself. Yeah, there, is, there, there, there is an aspect of akhlaq and humility and also that, yeah. you know, the carnivorous behavior. Yeah. You know, yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know yeah. we're, 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 we're enjoying meat, yeah. but not to like, you know, um, Rip it to yeah. shreds. <laughs> right, we will end on that note. Um, yeah, it's a good note. Day it's ahead. Made me hungry and, um, for, the, for, for, for lunch or dinner later on today. So, so um, you have your chicken wings, let us I'll know. I love the chicken wings. Let yeah. us know how I'll you get on. the next episode. <laughs> Take <laughs> a picture. <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> thank you for a blessed me. day for you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much, Sayed. Really, really appreciate your time. Um, once again, we look forward to seeing Sayed in the following episodes um, of Morning Barakah. Uh, we've had a jam packed day today mm -hmm. and we're going to get ready for the rest of the day, hopefully. So likewise for you guys, we, we should wish you a blessed. Um, day ahead of you and inshallah we'll see you soon. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.